Able to on Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Welcome to this edition of Able to On Air, the one and only program that for the past eight years has been focusing on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able both in Vermont and beyond. Um, we would like to thank our sponsors uh, first, um, Champlain Community Services, um, uh, Washington County Mental Health, and Green Mountain Support Services. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Alan Seiler. And with us to discuss this important topic of going to college and being special needs is Kelly Young uh, of um, Community College of Vermont. Thank you for joining us Thanks on for Able Then On Air. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And so, what is the missions and goals of Community College of Vermont, and what do you do for the, the college, and so on and so forth? Yeah, so the college has been around for almost 50 years, and the mission has, is to provide Vermonters with affordable access to education and to be successful in their goals. And my role there is as a student advisor and a lead coordinator for the Montpelier Academic Center. We have 12 centers around the state. Uh, the second largest one is here in Montpelier. Okay. Um, so what special programs does CCB have uh, for people that want to go to college and uh, that are special needs and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yeah, so like any school, of course, we provide accommodations for students who have documented disabilities. In addition, uh, we've got a wonderful program going right now with Voc Rehab. They have a grant called Linking Learning to Careers. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is to help students in high school with special needs, differently abled students in high school, to access career and college. Mm -hmm. And so they partner, Voc Rehab partners with, area, with the high schools in Vermont and, and with the Community College of Vermont. And the idea is to expose more students, differently abled students, to college, support them in success in a handful of college courses, and to understand how those connect to their career goals. And then to see that college is really maybe something that might be for them if they weren't considering it beforehand, or to have an easier entry into college for some folks. If college isn't for them, I know the CCU, because I know you have a associate degrees, yep. then you have certificates, and then you have workforce education or <coughs> something along those lines. Because I remember my wife and I taking a course on career advancement and workforce yeah. education. So can you explain those a little options. bit about the, those options and the difference between the three? Sure. So students come to us with their goals, what they'd like to achieve in the world, or we help them figure out what those goals might be. <coughs> and for some folks, that might be um, taking a course or two that's going to help them get a job they're looking for. For some folks, that might be earning a certificate or an associate's degree, and for some, planning for a longer term for going on for a bachelor's or master's degree. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we do have workforce education, and so we're always working with partnering organizations and employers to figure out, right now a big focus is how do we help employers um, to hire folks who can be successful on the job and to move up in their companies. So some of our programming is about offering training programs to the community, which might be credit bearing or they might not. And it, if they complete that program, they've got a job at the other end. And credit in some bearing, cases, what do you mean by credit bearing? So in some cases, workforce education courses uh, the completion of those courses leads to college credits, three college credits mm -hmm. per course, mm -hmm. typically. And in some cases, it's training that doesn't come with college credit. It sort of depends on the employer and the program. And they have to take a, because I remember the one we took, you got to know the computer, yes. you have to know the uh, certain exams. So you folks did the Governor's Career Ready Certificate yeah. Program? Yes. We unfortunately no longer have funding for that program and it seems to be, in some places, it's being taken up by other organizations. So Capstone Community Action in this area has a similar curriculum um, that I think is a national curriculum uh, for their kind of agency and so they have sort of taken that up. Um, so CCV is no longer offering that program, at least not right now. Mm -hmm. But we do continue to work with employers, certainly if an employer wants that curriculum and training, 
to bring people into their organization, we offer that that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. What um, for those that are quote unquote scared yeah. between going to uh, from high school, you know, because they might come from a special ed program, sure. so on and so forth. What is what is some advice that you can give to people who are transitioning into college? You know, because um, I went to junior to junior college first, and then went for my my four year degree. Yeah. But you know, college isn't for everybody. So can you kind of disseminate some of that? Yeah, and I think it's taking away, you know, not putting college isn't for everybody onto any particular population. That's what we don't want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to say everybody's got goals. So come to CCV, let's help you figure out what your goals are, and then let's help you figure out a pathway to those goals. Sometimes that might include some college, sometimes it might include a lot of college, it might not include any college. But that's the important thing, is where do you want to get to in the world, how can we help you get there? Um, and through this program with, uh, in partnership with Voc Rehab, we're able to really um, help more students. There are about 400 students served around the state, high school students, who um, take a series of courses through us. And, uh, any questions you want to ask? Um, it, what, um, in terms of um, the difference between a diploma, because mm -hmm. you know, going from special ed uh, to being mainstreamed, um, you know, what are some of the myths? Because you know, people sometimes, if you have an IEP diploma, might not be able to go to college right away. What are some of the myths that you Sure, can so that's one myth, is that, um, that somehow if you have a high school diploma through a special education program, it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just not true. If you have a high school diploma, you have a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. depending on the college you want to go to, some have entrance exams you have to pass. There are other pieces, Like CCB. Right? CCB has some, uh, well, would we you consider that a test an entrance exam? And not in the same way. So. Um, we have assessments that students take coming in so that advisors can help students decide where to start with English and math in particular. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a variety of, of entry points to that. We also partner with Central Vermont Adult Basic Ed in Montpelier and similar organizations. If a student's skills need some more brush up before they're ready to enter our pre-college classes, um, so there's pre-college classes, there's college classes, and then there's community organizations that can support as well. And we have some students doing all of the above. Um, right now we've got a, a, a Fundamentals of Math class happening this summer in partnership with Center for Mont Adult Basic Ed. Mm. CCV students register through CCV, but they're also CVABE students. And they can continue uh, to work. What is that? Central Vermont Adult Basic Ed. Uh -huh. They can continue to work with those folks on their math while they're taking other college courses. So, and that's true for any student, that, that array of options is available. So the purpose of those exams is not whether or not you get in, it's how can we best serve you and what are the and best sets of courses you need a, a, a remedial class or not. Yep, so there are developmental skills classes in English and math, particularly a lot in math because um, some, we have served adults who, it's been a long time since they've used math, and we serve students who might do, have focused on do accounting. Do people, when they that. finish their associate degree, do they have to take another test before they graduate or like an exit exam? There's not an exit exam. There is attached to our college level math classes, there is a quantitative reasoning assessment. That is a graduation standard for the Vermont State College system. Mm -hmm. So that's tied to our accreditation. We are allowed to give college credits that count in the world. And this is one of the reasons why we measure our graduation standard in math through this assessment. What is the percentage of people who graduate CCV? Is there like certain per year or? I don't have those exact numbers off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to get them for you. Mm -hmm. um, like most community colleges, um, we serve a variety of students for a variety of purposes. And so uh, we don't have as many students graduating from our programs as we'd like to. We're really refocusing. Um, our strategic plan is to refocus so that more students make it across the finish line if that's their goal. Mm -hmm. You know, they make it across the finish line to transfer or to a completed degree. Um, so, okay, community college, is, is that considered a junior college or what's the difference between it? It's a two year, it's an associate degree, yeah. granting institution rather than a four year or a bachelor's degree institution. Mm -hmm. I think another myth is that it's not a real college. And it's it isn't? It absolutely fully a real college. It's fully accredited. Oh, oh. Our degrees. Oh, they're really saying count. that people w who go to junior college is not a real college. Yeah, I'm going to go to the community college, and then I'm going to go to a real college. 
you know, well, we are a real college. It, those are real credits. They transfer all over the place. Um, and an associate's degree is a, is a real credential in the world. So mm -hmm. um, that's another myth, I think. Uh, I've did some research about that. Um, there's a large percentage of people with special needs who just don't go to college because they can't. Um, um, I think I sent you that. Yes. But what, uh, so is there any other particular myths within that about going to school and being special needs? I think there's a whole host of, of um, myths about people with special needs in general that may create barriers for them going to college. Mm -hmm. um, thinking they're not college material or they're not smart or they're not able or they're not capable mm -hmm. or any of those messages that can come. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know my, my own children have had a great experience in the schools and um, I think that we've come a long way in some communities and I think Montpelier is a great community. Um, and I think you know, there's probably a lot of them in Vermont where there's a lot more understanding of what inclusion really means and mm -hmm. that everybody's differently abled, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's gotten a lot better. But I think you know, people can absorb those messages from, from the culture. And I think that those can be barriers for folks. You notice you mentioned that there's a couple career programs you wanted to mention at CCB. So what are some of those? Well, what I wanted to talk to you about was the, the article that you sent me showing that um, disproportionately fewer people with special needs go to college. Mm -hmm. And so CCV is addressing that through that linking learning to careers, and I wanted to talk about some of those pieces, if I might. Go ahead. Um, we have about 400 students being served across the state, and again, this is Voc Rehab grant in partnership with CCV and high schools. And so most, we try to have all of them take Introduction to College and Careers, mm -hmm. and that's a non-credit bearing course that helps students develop skills for work and for college. So it's like a freshman seminar. It's kind of like that, yeah. Um, and it also helps them explore what are a variety of career paths that match my skills and interests and abilities, and what does it take to get to that career path? You know, is there training I need to do? Is there college I need to do? Is there a degree I need? Um, and, and to explore from there what they might want to take at CCB. We have a couple courses in particular. One is an exploratory workplace experience that uh, if there's a cohort of these students in any part of the state, we can offer to them. And that helps them have a, um, an internship experience, a supported internship where they can really try out a particular career. And then in addition to the two free college classes that all Vermont high school students get through dual enrollment, through our agency of education, they get two additional ones. So they get four more college classes. Mm -hmm. They could have a total of six through this program for free. Well, uh, what is meant by dual enrollment? Dual enrollment is a student who's duly enrolled. They're enrolled in high school and in college at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, so uh, our hope is that by exposing all of these students through introduction to college and careers, and then maybe they take the internships class and a couple other classes, now suddenly they are a successful college student and maybe they see themselves as a college student. Break, break the myth down. Oh, is the internship a job? Is the student getting paid for right. it? Right. Or not? Or both? Yeah, and so we call it an exploratory workplace experience, and so it could be job shadowing, depending on the career path they want to go into. It could be job shadowing to learn more about it. It could be um, where you're doing some volunteer work, you're doing some, some of the work that would be required on the job. Um, and then it could be a full-on internship where you're really fully participating in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's any, usually the exploratory early internship is really that. It's, it's job shadowing, it's checking things out, it's seeing how things work, and maybe getting your feet wet a little bit. Uh, they're typically not paid. Mm -hmm. um, that said, there could be ones that would be paid. I've been That's there, up to the I've done internships where it's not paid, yes. but then yes. some people need to get internships that are paid. Yeah, and so towards the end of their degree program at CCD, many programs require another workplace experience. Those are more full-on internships, not all the time, but more of the time they are, and some of the time those are paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the myths around, um, or, or the uh, misconceptions around people with special needs when people first meet them, and like, it's, um, you know, you know when uh, uh, when they're in college or. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the wonderful thing about CCV is that we have such a diverse student body on all counts. You know, we have stu our graduating class included 17-year-olds and 76-year-olds. Wow. Uh, we have uh, combat veterans. We have people with, you know, abilities and disabilities of all kinds, you know, really. And so I think for that reason, there's not, there's not a huge... Um, 
stigma or problem in terms of being in classes at CCV. You know, it's relatively um, easy to access accommodations, and they, there's no stigma placed on that. Well, you mentioned um, combat veterans. Can a student who is in the military or just about to get out of the military, can they use CCV on the GI Bill? Yes, absolutely. Okay. There's a variety of funding options through the military. Mm -hmm. And some of those students also have combat-related uh, special needs, you know, does that may CC need accommodation. Does CCV offer its students, since you said that, um, and they might have challenges, does CCV offer its students um, like an EAP program or a counseling mm. part to it? If you're a student, can you get health insurance being a student, et cetera? So we don't offer health insurance. We, we partner with um, United Way mm -hmm. to offer a resource advisor who helps students figure out which resources in the community are available, how they apply for them, how they mm -hmm. access them, and help them with that process. Mm -hmm. um, we don't provide those services directly. We're not a social service organization in that way, but we do try to provide an a, a easy way for students to connect to those resources. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, in terms of college, well, all right, uh, what has been your experience being an advisor? How long have you been with CCV? And I've been with CCV about 10 years, mm -hmm. and for about almost eight years, of those years I've been an advisor at CCV. Mm -hmm. And during those, those seven and a half, eight years, I've been um, also an ADA advisor, Americans with Disabilities Act advisor. So I'm one of the advisors who helps students access accommodations through CCV. In terms of the ADA, um, with college and higher education, um, has it always been easy for students with disabilities in college? And how has, it cha how has the ADA changed within that over the years? I think there's been changes in the law. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my area of expertise. Um, so for instance, it used to be that just a copy of your IEP was not sufficient uh, documentation to access accommodations, and that's changed. Um, there have been some you know, minor technical changes in the law. Um, I'm trying to think about what else. Like, like a service animal now can only be a dog or a small horse, mm -hmm. not anything else. Uh, there have been some nobody minor would bring changes. a small horse to class. What's that? I said nobody would bring a small horse to class. I guess they make them really small now, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, we haven't come right into that one, but we, we used to have uh, service animals that were not dogs or small horses, and we don't anymore. But but and I know that there have been other changes in the law. It's just uh, not my area. Do of professors are professors always open to helping students? Has that always been the case? Yeah, I think the kinds of. Um, uh, faculty who choose to work at the Community College of Vermont are really attracted to the diversity of the student body and um, to the variety of needs and strengths that they bring to the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so students who have dif different abilities are a part of that mix. And um, how it works um, at CCV and I, I believe in college, uh, which is a little different from high school, um, is that uh, students, they're the reasons that they have an accommodations plan is between them and their advisor. And if they want to choose that information, share that information with their instructor, they can. But otherwise, the faculty member just gets the, the here's the accommodations, here's what needs to be put in place. For example, what do you mean by accommodation plan? Sure, so a student might um, need extra time on tests and quizzes, might have focus issues and be distracted in a large room with lots of people, so need to take that test or quiz in a separate quiet location. Mm -hmm. um, a student might um, have <coughs> issues being, being emotionally triggered by content and so have the option to leave class. Um, and all students are option able to, to leave use. class? How do, what do you mean by that? So for instance, if um, I have challenges with social communication and emotional regulation and somebody says something that's upsetting to me, if I stay in class, I'm likely to get in trouble. I'm likely to blurt something out that's not going to be helpful to the class and maybe disruptive. So instead, I'm going to opt out. Or I might be somebody who has a trauma history and the content of the course might trigger my emotions and I might need to leave and just take a break and come back. Or for, or for example, photography class. Sure. If a student um, can't be in large crowds or if we go on a shoot, 
like a film set, for example. Sure. There are photographers on a film set. And if a student can't be in that environment, how do they deal with that or within the course? So um, a, a similar example I can give, we have a course going on this summer called Natural History of Vermont, and a part of it is hiking a mountain, a local mountain. Well, not everybody is capable of doing that. That's not that going to work for them. Hiking that mountain is not going to work. Um, and so a student with a physical disability or a medical disability might have, have an alternative assignment where they're still going out into the woods, but it's not hiking a mountain. Um, and in this case, it might be there's a similar assignment or a similar opportunity for learning, but it's not that same exact environment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of, uh, um, like, do, um, the ADA plan, do professors normally give, um, chances to finish assignments? Is there, uh, you know, like with extra time, how does that work with, like, homework assignments? And yeah, we don't typically offer an accommodation of extended time on assignments because our classes typically either meet online or once a week. And the challenge is, is that you get further and further behind if you're not completing your assignments because the next work is built on the previous assignment. Oh. What some students request and we're able to do is to provide advanced access to assignments mm -hmm. so that students, um, so for instance, a student with a mental health disability might, um, and sometimes a learning disability, might benefit from knowing what the assignments are in advance and having a longer time to work up to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that sometimes we can offer. It or, really or, or getting started before the class begins? Uh, that yeah. we can't guarantee because courses typically are not ready to go until the semester starts. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly having, you know, having advanced notice on assignments and being able to work progressively towards them. We do also offer for all students learning assistance in our learning and career center. How does that work? So that some places it's it's drop-in and starting this fall some it will be by appointment um, but you can go and get assistance with you know reading or writing or what the most common learning assistance is is really like study and time management skills. How do I map out my larger assignments to make sure that by the time a due date arrives I've actually gone through all the steps it takes to get it done well. And or if I need help with my portfolio, I can get that extra assistant. Yes, okay. exactly. It might be a math problem. It might be how to use something on a computer. It might be any number of things. Use, uh, a math problem, how, how to use something on a, a camera because it, it's dealing, you're dealing with numbers and different things. I probably, I'm guessing most, some, you might come across a learning and career center staff member or mentor who knows something about cameras, but we don't have a ton of film classes, so probably that's not going to be a primary area where you get support. Mostly it's um, research paper writing, uh, uh, math, uh, how to use the library, how to use the online resources, how to manage your time and plan your assignments. Mm. Yep. Um, in, okay, so um, is there any other major things that you wanted to talk about within the program? I don't think so. I think we've done a lot of it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, address and phone number where people can be reached at sure. CCV? Because the Community College of Vermont is all over the state, probably the best place to go is our website, which is www.ccv.edu. Mm -hmm. And the main statewide phone number to call would be 802-828-2800-2800. Um, because we do have, from there, you can get to any of our 12 academic centers, you can get to staff lists, you can get to all the different Where programs we offer. Where are the academic offer. centers, if you don't mind me, uh, me asking, what is, uh, where are the academic centers located? So let's see if I get this right. Newport, St. Johnsbury, Morrisville, Montpelier, St. Albans, Winooski, Middlebury, and then moving south, um, Wilder in the Upper Valley near White River, um, Brattleboro, Springfield, mm -hmm. Bennington, and Rutland. But the most popular campus is? Winooski is by far our largest academic. And then we also have a lot of online classes. Mm -hmm. The most classes that we hold are online. Is it more, is it more popular online as far as? We offer classes? far more classes online than we do at any academic center. Yep. And Why then, is that? Is there a reason? I think, uh, you know, people are navigating the world 
through mm -hmm. technology more and more. And it provides a great deal of convenience, uh, particularly, I think, for adult learners who are trying to manage more and more on their plates with jobs and mm -hmm. appointments and kids and, you know, all of that. Yeah, because um, as I'm listening to you, I'm no, you know, as we're listening to you, uh, we're noticing you said classes are once a week? If they're in person, then classes are typically once a week. There are occasionally classes like a four-credit lab science might meet mm -hmm. twice a week, but by and large, our classes are Is once a week. Is there a reason why classes are only once a week, though? Because like, uh, yeah. when I went to community college, I mean, I had classes four or five days a week. Yes. So you might have a, you might come to campus, if you're full-time, you might come to campus four different days for four classes, but each class meets once a week. And the reason for that is, well, a few, couple of reasons. One is so that um, for people who are working or have a lot on their plates, it doesn't take as much, as many days and times and figuring out schedules to get there. Mm. So it's more accessible for them. And the other reason is that if a class is two hours and 45 minutes long, uh, oh. we've got, our classes are very small. The largest is typically 18, maybe 20 on the outside. And the class size average is something like 13 for the college. So you're talking about an opportunity to go in depth, to do collaborative work in teams, to really um, engage with the material with your instructor and your classmates mm -hmm. um, in a way that it's not lecture halls, it's not, you know, 50 minute lecture, come back, do the homework, come back. You know, mm -hmm. it's really diving into the material and having a chance to explore Can it. Can you together. explain now, I'm not like, you know, with us, when we started our class this fall, I noticed that you had a, that you're having us take like a, a new student seminar. What does that do for someone? I mean, because I have community college experience, and so sure. does my wife. But what does that do for a student at um, any college being a new student? How, how does that work within? Sure. So a new student orientation. Schedule. Um, at CCV, it's different things at different colleges, but in, in general, it's a way to welcome new students, help them understand how to use the tools in front of them and be successful on the path. Mm -hmm. So um, at our orientations, we are you know, welcoming students, helping them get to know each other a little bit so they can start the semester knowing a few people. Uh, we're orienting them to the campus, to the portal, the online space that they use to access a lot of the materials they need, and then to also every single course. And do it's homework online with the homework online. Sure, so every single class, whether it's in-person or online, has a, a course site. Mm -hmm. um, and starting in the fall, we're using something called Canvas. And so it used students, to be called Moodle. Exactly, that's phasing out, Canvas is coming in. And that's a space where students, um, where faculty can, whether they're on the ground or online, can post materials, can post assignments, have a grade book, and student, students need to know how to navigate that space. Mm -hmm. um, so, is it, so, but do, do students put their assignments on there so they can get checked, or how, how does that work? That depends on the, on the course and the faculty member. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more on the ground, face-to-face -face faculty are also using that feature. Mm -hmm. um, but the assignments could be something that you hand in or email your instructor or, um, yeah, or, or post to that course site. More and more faculty okay. are using it that way. So repeat the number one more time. and. Address? Yes. Most college... important thing is our web address, and that's www.ccv.edu. Mm -hmm. From there, you can explore our programs. You can explore different locations around the state. And the uh, statewide phone number is 802-828-2800. And where in Montpelier is the college located? We are at 660 Elm Street. Mm -hmm. So if you know where the pool and the ballpark are, we're right across the street. Okay. For more information on... CCV and their programs, you can go to www.ccv.edu or call 802-828, what is it? 2800. 802-828-2800. Uh, I would like to thank Kelly Young, um, student advisor of uh, Community College of Vermont, for coming to talk to us today. I uh, would like to thank our sponsors, uh, Champlain Community Services, uh, Green Mountain Support Services, and Washington County Mental Health. This puts an end to this edition of the Able Dead On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.
Smooth and On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.